Happy Thanksgiving, fit lovers. Welcome back. I am Ramsey. And I am Mina. Well, if you're in a relationship or have ever been in a relationship, you know that arguments are going to happen. The occasional argument is a natural and almost inevitable part of any relationship. And while arguments have gotten a bad name over the years, it doesn't have to be all bad. Yeah, we know that's kind of a funny topic to talk about on Thanksgiving Day, but just as good a day as any to discuss three ways that arguing actually strengthens your relationship. This is The Fit Love Show. wondering exactly how arguing can help a relationship. Well, it's not so much that arguing is a good thing, it's just that conflict within a relationship is unavoidable. Yeah. That's right. The way a couple deals with conflict with each other can either make or break the relationship. People who handle conflict through disrespect, meaning screaming, yelling, name calling, pointing fingers, are far less likely to have a successful relationship than those who handle conflict with love, honesty, and respect. So basically what you're saying, Mr. Luke, is communication plays a big role in how couples successfully or unsuccessfully deal with conflict. That is exactly what I'm saying, Mrs. Luke. Well, I don't like arguing, I don't like hostile disagreements, and I don't like when we're mad at each other. No. Nope. What I do like is how we manage to get past disagreements quickly. So today, we'll be discussing three ways that arguing, or as we like to call it, openly discussing, can actually strengthen your relationship. Before we begin, we'd like to ask you to please click that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn your notifications on so you'll be notified when new episodes are released. All right, babe. Let's get it cracking. Have you ever been driving and noticed a fire burning in some distant field with the fire department standing nearby watching it burn? What they're doing is intentionally burning off the excess weeds and brush so that if a wildfire starts, it won't be a bigger and unmanageable problem later. The same line of reasoning can be applied to arguments between you and your significant other. If the two of you can learn to discuss problems and issues that are bothering you instead of holding them inside, it could prevent a much larger problem down the road. Mina used to hold this stuff all the time. And you could see that something was wrong. I'd ask her, I'd be like, babe, what's wrong? Or is there something bothering you? And the response would always be, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> it actually became a joke after a while. I would tease her saying stuff like, you know, you know, my foot got trapped in a tree grinder and it's just hanging by a piece of skin. And But I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. But she wasn't fine, and whatever she was upset about would eventually come out. And when it did, it was like that time bomb going off. I would always feel like what was upsetting me wasn't important, and I didn't want to bother him with it. And while I appreciated Mina not wanting to burden me with things and issues, not talking about what was bothering her became a bigger burden later when she blew up. So while no one, or almost no one, likes arguing. Not talking about what's upsetting you can create a bigger issue down the road. Do you ever feel like you and your significant other are simply going around in circles during an argument and can't seem to come to any resolution? Maybe it's because you haven't identified what's upsetting you. Often what people argue about isn't what's really upsetting them. It could be a much deeper issue, triggered, by what you and your significant other are currently arguing about. Maybe it isn't the wet towels that were left on the bathroom floor that bothered you, but an overall feeling of being taken for granted. Maybe it's not how often your significant other hangs out with their friends, but feelings you have of loneliness or disconnectedness between you and your significant other. Whatever the issue is, the only way it's gonna come out is if the two of you talk about it. Whenever I get upset, I don't want to talk to anyone, I don't want to be around anyone. And sometimes that's okay. 
Sometimes you just need to take a pause and figure out what's really bothering you and why. If you're shutting down because you're mad or want to punish your significant other, well, that's not healthy for you or your relationship and makes your significant other feel unloved and ignored. Figure out what's bothering you, but more importantly, why it's bothering you and talk about it. Yep, it's like having gas. If you keep it inside, it causes all kinds of discomfort. When you let it out, you feel much better. Yeah, it might stink at first, but then it dissipates, just like the problem after it's talked about. Anyway, I thought it was a good analogy. Mina and I have certainly gotten into our fair share of heated arguments, but I'd be the first to tell you that I hate heated arguments. My days are already stressed and action-packed. I don't need to add more stress on top of it. That said, there are some issues me and I have dealt with and have overcome as a result of the heated arguments. Had we not been in the heightened emotional state we were in, we may not even have bothered bringing up the issue at all. We probably didn't know it at the time, but getting into those heated arguments, although unpleasant, helped us to understand each other better and build trust. Yeah. A huge part of gaining trust and understanding is how your significant other responds. Like we said earlier, if the conversation between the two of you is mean and disrespectful, you probably won't trust the other to open up to them. But if they respond to you with love and respect, you'll have a better chance of resolving the conflict. And your significant other will trust you enough to open up to you about future issues. And there will always be future issues. If the two of you could remember that it's both of you versus the problem, not both of you versus each other, you'll be well equipped to get through any issue you may face. Well, Fit Lovers, that's our show for today. We thank you for joining us. Thank you. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Fit Love 101, and share this video. And don't forget to turn your notifications on so you'll be notified first when new episodes are released. Yep. Thanks again, Fit Lovers. Happy Thanksgiving again. We'll see you next time. Hmm. <laughs>